today is one of those videos when i'm super proud because it's one of my students who has come here and not just any student because she's sort of a special student she was very regular during the entire course uh, again she is a woman and there are very less women candidates i have had for mock interviews and she is a new mother also like uh, i have put a status on insta and all she used to take classes while taking care of her baby and she was super regular she used to do homework she used to do really awesome and this is her first hld discussion so the video is very very special in many ways as you can see so without wasting any time i will let her only introduce herself because that's what we do over here and then we'll get started with the interview hi hello everybody this is chevanti i am working as a software engineer i have around 6 years of experience but trust me this is my first hld discussion and this is my first interview ever and i am very happy that i am doing my first mock with keerthi okay let's get started i know that she will do great so let's see the interview and whatever happens we'll discuss after that in the feedback session so let's get started before we go ahead i would just like to take a minute and remind you that the 5 week live lld course which is the next course in which chevanti has already signed up and most of the hit students have already signed up is starting on the 19th september If interested, do check out all the details on kithipurswanikourses.com. All the details are mentioned over there in the FAQ section. Everything is mentioned. But if you still have any questions, you can mail me. I would love to help you in any way possible. Honestly, I am recording this after the entire video, and the way I could connect with Chevanti, I am feeling very overwhelmed and proud. The way she did in the video and what all things she said to me later, I am very very proud of the courses that are happening. If you would like to be part of the community, most welcome. Just check it out, and you can just ask the honest feedback from any of my students. The testimonials are also there on the site. Uh, listening to them, I am feeling overwhelmed that okay, the courses are such a huge success, and I'm really looking forward to the LLG course as well. Uh, if interested, do check it out, and without wasting any time, let's continue with the meeting. So, Chevanti, can you design a URL shortage service today? Okay, so URL shortener service. Um, you mean that the user will be uh, giving a longer URL, for that they'll have to get the shorter one. And if the user uh, clicks on the shorter one, we will have to redirect them to the longer one. Is it correct? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Okay. okay. So here, who who is going to be the user? Kitty, like, uh, uh, are we going to design it for the admin as well? Say. uh do we have any a uh, tracking system where how many clicks has happened for this particular url do are we going to do that as well or only for the users uh say they'll be just coming and upload uh, getting the shorter one and then now uh, other users they'll come and click on the shorter one and will be redirected to the longer one yeah, the two non yes yes these two use cases only for customers as well so let's uh, ignore the admin and the tracking and all of that for now okay so is that uh, a url has any expiry uh, can a customer mention any expiry mm, customer can mention and you can have a default also say within a Def month or one year you want to do it okay so that's up to you okay so i'm just writing a functional requirements sure Functional requirements. The user will be giving us the so will give long the URL. We have to give them the shorter one. When the short URL and it should be unique, right? Yeah. Uh, one more uh, doubt is that uh, can one user create multiple URLs? Right? Like one too many? This relationship is possible, right? Yes. Okay. So you are saying uh, one URL will lead to another URL only, or you are saying user can create many? Like your yes. one to many is like. Yes. Okay. So user can create many. Yeah, but for any one URL, there will be one shorter version, and for every shorter version, there will be only one longer version. It's not like there will be many. 
Okay, so for, for each long, like say, if the multiple customer is entering the same long URL, so we are going to give them the different, different, like unit shorter one, correct? So we will not be repeating the same short URL for the existing long URL also. You should be repeating the same one, no? Uh, okay, say I am uh, giving one URL, kthipurasvan.com website I'm giving. And uh, this, uh, so my our service is uh, returning one short, unique short URL. Okay, and you are coming and giving the same URL. So our system has to give the same shorter one or it should be unique. Uh, let's, okay, let me know in the design wise, like how it will be different. Uh, let's okay. keep this like into discussion that how our design would be different if we want to have a unique one or different. Okay, sure. And uh, so when accessing, and accessing short to uh, we have to read that. And expiry is optional. Like uh, user expiry is optional. We can have the default expiry option. Hmm. Can we keep it for one month or six months? One month sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so coming on the non-functional requirement side, the system has to be minimal latency and uh, it has to be highly available. Do you agree with that? Because uh, like say the system has um, more read heavy because uh, if I am uh, getting the shorter one, there is a chance that multiple users will come and uh, feed the particular URL. So as the read heavy, so I, I'm going with highly high availability. Does it make sense? Uh, under cap theorem, if you see over here, so you are saying you are prioritizing availability and not consistency. So can yeah, you so explain can... that a bit? What was your thought process? Okay, so because uh, say, uh, see it's it's like say I'm considering for one write that is going to be hundred read operations. Okay, so uh, the system has to be highly available in terms of like say if the user is coming and trying to access a shorter URL, we have to redirect them. If our system is completely down. It's not available, then uh, it will give them the error, right? And consistent, uh, it, I don't think consistent have a major role to play here we, because we, still, we are just going to upload and redirect the users. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So non-functional requirements, uh, high availability. and uh, low latency. So this is a read heavy system. Does it make sense, Kitty? Yep, yep. Okay. Okay, so next thing is I'll, I'll uh, consider the traffic estimation, capacity estimation. Uh, okay, so I'm considering a uh, 1 million daily active users. Okay. okay. So there is a daily active users one million. Uh, for write, like say as I, I told, like there will be a, a read uh, write ratio is hundred is to one. Like a daily active users user is one million, and let's say I'm considering each user is at least a writing. Uh, three URLs per day. Uh -huh. Okay, writing three URLs per day, uh, which gives three million writes per day. Yeah. Three million writes. So I mentioned writes, three million. Okay, so I'm considering daily active user as one million, and mm -hmm. each user writes three URLs per day. So which comes under 3 million writes per day. Yeah. 
okay mm -hmm. so as it's uh, i am considering read is to write issue as 100 is to 1 like say there is 100 read for one write mm -hmm. so which comes 300 million read per day yep so is it is, is this uh, numbers make sense yeah, yeah it does so okay and for the url size uh, the maximum character allowed is 2048 character. So approximately it will come under 2 KB. Okay. Okay. So I'm doing storage calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, so for 3 million writes. Okay. Uh, the size is going to be 2 KB. So which will come under 3 into 10 to the power. 6 into okay total uh, total zeros are 10 to the power 9 which means 6 into 10 to the power 9 so i'll just directly write it here sure. uh, 6 into 10 to the power 9 uh, which comes 60 million okay um uh, forgot the 9 9 mb 60 mb or 6 gb Right, so shall I repeat this part again? Yeah, sure. So 6 GB per day. So is this calculation correct quickly? Yep, yep. I just confused with the line. Uh, no, no problem. No problem. Okay, so uh, for the storage calculation, uh, for considering 3 uh, million writes and each URL has 2 KB, the maximum size, uh, then if you are calculating it, it will be like 6 in, into 10 to, the, 10 to the power 9. So million is 10 to the power 6 and KB is 10 to the power 3. So when we calculate this, we, we get 6 GB per day. So yeah. if we are storing uh, it for the 5 years. Okay. okay. So approximately it will be uh, 5 into 365. Uh, it will come around 2000, 365 into 6 GB. Uh -huh. So it will come around 2000 uh, into 6 GB, uh, which goes around 6 to the 12, uh, 12 TB for five years. Okay, I have one question over here to confuse you. So okay. you are saying that your expiry is of one month. Uh, but then you are storing all the URLs, like for five years. Uh, yes, but uh, meanwhile, like say uh, we can run our some cleanup service to uh, if there is uh, any expiration, then we can delete it. So I'm just doing the maximum of how how much we will be able we have to store. Okay, in the storage estimation, so you are assuming that uh, you are not going to delete any URLs, right? I'm right now. I'm I'm okay. Yes. See, I am calculating the maximum of how much storage we need it, but uh, our service uh, should support for the cleanup as well as we are supporting the expiration. Okay, got it. Do, got we it. do I need to calculate uh, for that as well? Like, say, uh, for every month there will be a cleanup. So no, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. So 12, it. okay, 12 TB for five years. And then for let's go for the bandwidth calculation. So it will come like. Uh, uh, OK, so I have uh, 6 GB per day, so I'll calculate for per second. So 6 GB per day. OK, I can write it as uh, 6 into 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 9. Sorry, 16 to 10 to the power 3, uh, which is yeah. So approximately uh, 1 million is equal to 12 requests per second. So I'm taking uh, 6 into 12 into 10 to the power 3. So like our uh, around it will come under. I'll just round off it to 100. Okay, into 10 to the power 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 100 kbps per second. Okay. Okay, does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Fine. 
so this is our bandwidth and storage calculation. So approximately we need 12 dB storage for five years and per day we need six, six GB storage. So Kiti, one more question here is that uh, while generating a short URL, uh, how many characters do we have to generate? How many would you want to make sure that, you know, the URLs are unique? Yes. Okay. So uh, as per our calculation, like say we need, we are taking 12, 12 TV. Okay. So if, uh, fine. Uh, say if we are taking uh, like the encoding, okay, shall we consider this while designing our services or do we, shall we discuss now itself? As you wish, I'm okay with that. Okay, I'll just start talking about this when I when I'm designing the particular service. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Next uh, comes under uh, the sequence uh, how the our data is going to flow. Um, say once the so I'll just drop and then start it. Okay. Oh. Okay, so I am just taking. I have this is the user. Um, uh, and then I have uh, one service to you know create the short URL. So let I am calling this one as URL shortening service. And I will be having one more service for you know, redirect the user. So I can have this as read service or redirection service. Okay. okay, as we have to scale our system because there will be a, there are more users who is going to come and use our service. So I'll, I'll be uh, designing a microservices. So uh, let's consider that uh, this has a many uh, services, like many URLs shorting service we have, many servers. And same applies for the redirection as well. So I'll be having load balancer here to redirect redirect the request. Okay. So I have load balancer here, uh, which will redirect the request to the across the different services, different web servers. So uh, we can follow uh, different technique like round robin, weighted round robin, least uh, connection service. So there are many methods. So I can uh, uh, choose weighted least connection. Because uh, this particular uh, method will have will check the whether the service is exactly uh, how much connection is handled right now and how much weight the service has. So based on that, it will redirect our request. So this is efficient as well. So I'm just considering weighted disconnection method. Okay. okay. Uh, so the flow is going to be like the user will come and request for the URL shortening service. So this service, what it has to do is uh, the we have to return user the unique URL. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to generate the unique URL? Uh, okay. We can do uh, it in multiple ways. So right now, I'm just thinking of uh, doing it in the hashing method. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I can hash the particular URL and then uh, return them the URL. Okay. But as it has to be a unique, I mean, shorter one. If I'm considering a hashing, uh, then I can go for M, like MD5 hash algorithm. Uh, okay, say I'm choosing some hashing function. So shall I write? I'm just writing it here. Sure, sure. Yeah. Hashing. So then uh, that could, so it will return, uh, I believe this will return 128-bit long URL. So this is quite big for us. Anyway, again, we are going to, this will be like, again, we'll be returning them the longer one. Oh. Uh, uh, one solution I could think of is that, like, say, if it is giving us a bigger URL, say, I have something like this. Okay. Uh, I can consider, consider the, okay, now uh, we have to discuss about how much character uh, we have to choose. Okay, let me say, think of uh, six, yep. seven, and eight. So what do you say, Kitty? Do you have anything in your mind? Like uh, how many uh, digits shall we use? Character shall we use? So uh, based on how many unique you want, like we can think of it in that sense. 
okay fine so okay so one more uh, fine i can think like uh, we can go for seven or eight eight characters because it should be readable as also and it will look unique also what so is seven or eight? Have eight so if you have eight characters how many unique ones can you generate okay okay fine so after hashing if i am doing some encoding like a base 62 or 64 then it will be like uh, say say 64 will have plus some special characters and consider base 62 okay so if i am considering base 62 it will be like uh, 62 raised to the power 7 if it is 7 it will uh, i guess it will come around uh, 3.5 3 trillion more than 3 trillion uh, and why are you saying 62 power 7? Like how power okay. 7? Okay, because this is base 62 and if I'm considering 7 characters. Like why are you considering I'm... 7 characters? Okay, you're considering 7 characters. Okay. Yeah, so just okay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So if at all I'm considering 8 characters. Okay. Uh, okay. It will go more than 240 trillion. Okay. I believe this number is too big for our system because okay. we just need a, a 12 TB even for five years. Uh -huh. 12 TB, like 3 trillion is more than enough for us. Like if you are generating okay. 3 trillion unique, uh, uh, you like say number, sorry, URL, then it will be more than enough. So does it make sense? So I can, I'll consider yeah, seven yeah. characters. It does, it does. Okay. Okay, so fine. So if I am doing hashing and then the if I am sending this back, sending it to base 62, yes, then here the problem is that uh, this first seven letters, like if if at all I am considering the seven, then there is mm -hmm. there are more possibility that we'll end up in repeating the same characters for different URL also. As first mm -hmm. we are doing the hashing, okay. Mm -hmm. So then I'm I'll consider only doing a base, like say I'll just I'm just doing just encoding alone for the particular URL. Hmm. Then it will be like uh, the problem I could think of is uh, first I have to generate the random number to encode the particular URL, right? So I need some random number if I am using, say if I can use UUID, unique uh, number generator. If I am using this again, I could think that uh, uh, this will, this numbers will be repeating in some more, more scenarios. So the data yeah, correction. Exactly here mm -hmm. okay so this is also not going to work for us okay so we need uh, to be anyway we have to do the encoding and we don't want any repetition okay one more thing i can think solution i could think is that uh, i can use i can start from the number zero and then keep on incrementing okay okay Say i have uh, uh, I, I have separate service which is called count of counter generator. Okay. So what it can do is uh, it can start from zero. Okay. And then uh, it will keep on incrementing whenever I'm requesting for the new random number. So in this way, I can avoid repetition of numbers. Right. Okay. But again, the problem here is it will be a single point of failure. Right. Say okay. what if my counter generator. Uh, if somehow it went off then again all our services will be will gone right like so it will be a single point of failure so uh, one more okay so i can have multiple counter counter generator but again the problem is the counter should not generate the same number again and again say i have uh, also what if like uh... Like, you know, two, three people are trying to generate at the same time. They all, you know, same counter might be given to those. Uh, uh, yeah, so. and that I guess we have to apply for a log. But yeah, before we're discussing, like I'll just go with uh, uh, how this generator is going to have the unique number. Can you quickly tell me what was the problem with UUID? Like if I have, say, customer underscore, say, timestamp or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, like customer ID underscore timestamp. What is the problem with that? Customer ID underscore. Okay, what if? Oh yeah, we can go because we can do with the timestamp. 
because uh, see if at all we are not approaching for the batch operation say like the customer is trying to uh, give for give 10 or at same time and then uh, return and asking for shorter your for the 10 Okay. If you are not good giving, then it's not going to be a problem. But yes, if if you are going for like in future, if you are supporting for batch operation, then it will be a problem, right? Like we cannot have user ID as well as time timestamp for this one long URL, right? Okay, okay, that's a Makes good sense. case. Yeah, go on. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'm not so we are not considering the user ID or timestamp right now because timestamp time stamp also can you know as you say if multiple user comes in then it will be a problem for us so we, we cannot take that as a, so a unique one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So now the problem here that we are trying to solve is we have counter gener multiple counter generator, but the thing is uh, each should not generate the same number so it should be unique one. Uh, okay. So let's say. I have I have one, so I'm considering that this particular generator starts from zero to one million. Okay, and this one is one million to two million. Okay. Okay, again, this is from two million to three million, and this goes on. Okay. Oh. Two million to three million, but again. Uh, Okay, so to manage all this, I'll have one more service which is called some counter coordinator service. So naming shall make sense, Kitty. Yeah. Counter coordinator service. Like say this particular uh, service is responsible, like a which counter generating a number from which range to which range. Okay, so whenever I'm I am generating a new counter, so that means I'm creating a new a service for this counter generator i have to so we can go and register here like it can maintain some uh either cache or some database back in like it, it can maintain some database it can uh, register like this particular service is generating number from zero to one million and if it reaches that particular range say this counter this service, counter generator service one reaches the its maximum limit again we have to reset this particular service so like say uh we have to assign them the unused number. So once uh, this service reaches up to 1 million, and then we have to uh, reset this number, which is unused. Like say right now, I, the unused number I can consider is 3 million to 5 million. Sorry, 3 million, no, sorry, 4 million, 3 to 4 million. Is it fine, Piti? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I could say that uh, I have some some keys to some some DB uh, which will I have database so which will take care of uh, which counter service having the range. Okay, so this will be backed by this. Like this, this service will maintain this one. So and all this are going to like whenever we are adding a new uh, service also we are going to register that yes uh, I am a new one and please register me and give me the new range. Yep. Okay. So I can yeah if the range if I I, I believe this will be small in size but if it is goes like we can shard it. Shard okay. this. Okay. So we okay. sharding on basis of. Um. Uh, range be, between the ranges I can do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so now we solve the problem of the unique random ID. Okay. So now what are uh, base are this? I just I'll write this as uh, encoding service. I'm just segregating everything. Okay. Or if you want, uh, uh, how do you prefer? Kitty? Like, shall we have this encoding? inside this URL shortening service also, or do we separate this one or this will call the counter service to generate the URL? What would you prefer and why? Like what is your thought process? Sorry, I was not able to hear you. Like what would you prefer? So you would want it separately or you would want it uh, mm. like it's same together, combined together. So, and what is your thought process? Okay, uh, I was thinking like to separate uh, why because I say if you if you want to any uh, uh, URL chatting service, okay. So here I could think like uh, one more problem is that uh, what? Okay, the problem will come in the redirection part. Okay. 
so this is just the encoding encoding part till till go and uh, reach our counter to get me the random number till give back the random number and then mm -hmm. okay so it wins i receive the random number it will be generating uh, the unique url and just it will return back to it and what is the purpose of this one okay i can keep this both same okay uh, so can you explain that thought process once more like yes what are you so Yes, I was saying that. Okay, I I do not have any particular task for this URL shortening shortening service because see once I receive the request from the user, so what I'll do is I'll just simply re redirect the request to the encoding service. Say that this is my long URL. Please convert it to the short URL. So what this particular service will do is that it will just uh, just redirecting the request, right? Like I I do not have particular thing to do in this particular services. Mm -hmm. I don't have specific task to do it here. Okay, so you're combining those two. Yeah, right. so I'm just combining these two. Okay, okay. So yes, I'll keep encoding. So sorry, you are shortening service. So I'll just remove this now. Yep. Once the user uh, request for the shorter one, uh, our service what load balance load balancer will redirect the request to our URL shortening service. From yeah. there, uh, we will get some random number. I'll get one random number, generate the shorter short URL based on the uh, base 62 encoding algorithm. Fine. Okay. Once I got this URL, so I'll have to store it right. Okay, now comes the storage part. Before uh, storage. Uh, so I know you said something about it, but could you please explain once more why did you not go ahead with base 64 and why base 62? Okay, because base 64, I think it has plus and minus. Okay. So, Special character is there, right? So I, I uh, the if URL is con uh, contains plus or minus and it is not readable, you know. So that's why I choose sixty two. All right, all right, go. Okay, okay. So see, uh, you, uh, quickly I'll write the API design for create shorter URL also. Okay. Uh -huh. So create short URL. So like say, okay, uh, fine. I'll. Uh, I'm starting with AP dev key. This is first. I'll mention all the parameters and I'll explain what is what. Okay. Sure. And then uh, it will contain who's creating it, and then the long URL and expiry XVR keeping like uh, if expiry is optional. Uh -huh. Okay. And the timestamp. So uh, the API dev key is nothing but uh, the unique key that we are giving uh, to the user, like who is going to create it to identify, uh, to identify whether this particular developer or user has the rights to create the URL to access our service. Mm -hmm. We have permission. Like uh, even with this API dev key, uh, I think we can even do the rate limiting part uh, that like say multiple users cannot come and directly you know uh, create like multiple urls like we can throttle the request uh -huh. got it okay okay so this is my create url request so like yeah this is my rec uh, this is how it looks like in the response i can give them uh, the success 200 success with the short url and the short url is going to be unique so this is this is fine Yep, yep, makes sense. Okay, okay so I was uh, saying about so you're returning the short URL in the body itself or in the header. Uh, where are you returning it? Sorry, Kitty. So you're returning the short URL in the header or the body? Where are you returning it? Uh, in the body. I'll be returning it in the body. Okay. Why? Okay. So this is a getter API, right? Yes. So in the header okay. doesn't make sense. No? So it's a content, so I'll be returning it in the body. Okay. And uh, uh, and this is going to be the HTTP call from user okay. to our service. Okay. 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 Uh, or you can go for HTTPS. I mentioned HTTP. Sorry. Uh, so it will be more secured. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll quickly mention how our data will look like because we have to store this now. Uh, yeah. Say okay. So here, as we said, one user can create multiple URL, right? 
correct? We can request for the multiple short hour for the different different longer ones, right? Yeah. Okay. So first, I'll, I so I'll I'll have to design two uh, databases. Like one is the user DB, and another one is uh, URL. So first, I'll okay. create a schema. And we'll choose which data store to use and how uh, how why we are choosing. Okay. Sure. So it will have the user ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just very simple thing. An email if you need. And uh, when we when the user has been registered with us, that's it. And anything else you could think of? So is it make sense? Like just a user who's going. To what does create at means because uh, was it like the last created ones because as you said one user is creating many URLs right? So this table specific to the user. So I'm just taking when the user is registered with the with our service. Achha, so when the user is okay. when the user is first registered. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So like again we can even have a timestamp also like whenever the, we are making an entry whatever is fine. Why is it needed though? When was the user registered? Uh, Okay, even makes sense. We don't want this. Okay, all right, no problem. Yeah. Go okay, so just uh, shall I keep it or uh, remove this one? You can remove it. Yeah. Okay. So then the user table will have only two field. One is user ID. Okay, and we have we should have the unique ID also, right? just ID for the user. Okay. Isn't that user ID only? Um, okay, what if the user has multiple entries? Yeah, that's what I was asking you. So there's another DB also, right, for the URLs. Correct, so correct. how are you connecting the user DB to this uh, URL DB? So user okay. has like a list of URLs that he, has, he or she has shortened. Correct. So how are you relating both the DBs? Okay. Uh, I think then we, we, we actually we have to connect them using a user user ID only, not this ID. If if I'm keeping a different ID for the same user, then while fetching the URL, it will be a problem. So I'll remove this also. So the user ID makes sense. So say uh, I have a different table for URL, where the foreign key or the connecting joining key would be the user ID. Okay. Okay. So makes this, sense. Uh, like there can be things like name, phone number, and all of that in the user table. It's fine. Okay, so I'll just start writing name, right name on that. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So I have I'll be the I should have another table which for the URL. Oh. So obviously uh, it will have who has created this one. Okay. And the original long URL. So I'll have original URL. And the short URL that we have generated. that uh, its expiry is going to be there and created it uh, at what time this URL has been created. OK. OK, and uh, like say uh, even we could maintain something else called uh, how many times this URL has been visited. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so because like we can use for the analytics purpose. So okay. like say uh, so last visited. Like it is this incremental value. Like whenever we are visiting this URL, so we can increment this one. Yep. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these are all these schemas I could think of. Uh, okay. So first, shall shall we consider this part and come to a DB discussion, or shall we do this and then go back to the flow? Uh, let's finish this off. Let's. Let's finish this off. So which database are you using? How are you storing it? Okay. Um. See, uh, I could think of for RDM, RDBMS relational as well as NoSQL. Uh, see, uh, okay, if I am choosing NoSQL, the problem here for me comes with the uh, sharding. Because say, the even I can shard it based on the you short URL. Say this one is unique only, so I can go with that. But as NoSQL comes with, you know, a scalable option, it's an inbuilt scalable as well as uh, even we have some document uh, DB which supports. NoSQL or SQL? Yeah, I was I was telling the trade off like why I'm choosing this and that. Huh. Can you repeat that? Yeah, I do. See, if I am uh, considering RDBMS SQL database, uh, the thing is I have to scale it manually. 
like i can scale based on the sharding right so i can partition uh, uh, my like say i have i'll be having two tables so i can partition based on the short short url uh -huh. correct okay so short url is a unique one so i can do that way and even i can do indexing on the short url this is one possible solution and one more thing i can think of is that uh, no sql db uh, I, see why i am consider going for no sql is that my our system is read heavy operation correct and by default some uh, document uh, databases are offering a uh, read heavy supporting for read heavy operations like mongodb mm -hmm. okay uh, and it is specifically designed for that as well as even we can scale it very easily i'll go with mongodb okay so does it make sense so then uh, like so this you are going at with mongodb can you tell me what your uh, queries will look like okay uh fine so here i can uh, choose like a select mm. do you want me to write the query or shall i if possible like... can you write it down like what do you prefer so i'll go with select query mm. Okay, give me the uh, uh, my query will look like select original URL uh, from URL uh, like say this is my database name uh, where short URL is going to be because short URL is going to be a unique one so I'll be querying based on the short URL. Okay, so from the short URL you are trying to get the original URL. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and okay. if it is for the specific user ID, I can mention and or and I can uh, fetch based on the user ID also and with short URL. So anyway, okay. this is the unique one, so we don't we don't need that. Okay, so this will be the unique unique one short URL. So this is okay, where we are you keeping the entire thing on in MongoDB because firstly it is read heavy and you said that you want to do the sharding and you want to keep it scalable and that is why you went there with it. Exactly. exactly. Okay, got it. So it makes uh, sense. Yeah. A uh, user table, which one, uh, which DB are you going? Yeah, both, like, yeah, both I can go for, say that. Which user, say this one, I can go with the SQL database because the schema is fixed. We don't have anything here at all. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like we can have specific, uh, like, no, um, um, uh, like, see, for the URL, uh, I would say, like, we can even sometimes have these uh, expiry, or we don't we won't be having expiry or lost visit we can maintain or not don't maintain like this it depends no this doesn't have any fixed schema but this is fixed schema i can go with rdbm ms sql db okay fine okay all right yeah okay so okay so one okay so once uh i got my url back then i'll be saving this with the database part okay okay so now the i i think the write has been completed is it fine kitty yeah okay so now the user is giving and then we are generating the unique url and saving it back to the database part fine okay yeah 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 so now uh, let's go for the, the redirection service this is a read so this is where Okay, so again, the user will come and request for the redirection service. So one way to go about this is that we can directly go and fetch from the DB. Like this is okay. the query. Like, yeah, he'll be giving a, a short URL. We can go and fetch this, uh, ask a DB that, say, so this is my short URL. Please give the longer one. I have to redirect them. Okay. Okay. This is one way to go about it. But but this will be, again, the heavy load for the database, right? Like to go and keep on querying the DB. So we can go with some caches. Okay, I can have cache, distributed cache. Okay. Cache is distributed system, so we will be going with distributed cache. Okay. Uh, okay. So here, what? Okay. So what I can do now is, okay. Every time when the request comes in, uh, my rec my service will go and ask the cache like again. I'll just maintain the uh, shorter one and the longer one. Short and long URL, that's it, only two field. So whenever the user is querying for the URL, I'll uh, fetch based on the short short URL, okay. Okay, now uh, the problem here, like, uh, okay. What I can do here is that I can maintain most frequently used URLs in the caching. 
like because we cannot store everything in the cache, right? Like it's expensive. So I can go with the most frequently used. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. Uh, whichever the world is uh, less frequent, like I can kick it out of the cache. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So so that the cache miss will reduce. Yeah. 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 Okay. So actually, yes. So my cache updation policy will be okay. Cache eviction policy is going to be end of you. Let's fake frequently used. Yeah, yeah. So whenever if there is like say we can I can get the data data, data, uh, data from the database data store. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. So now okay, so one more thing is to consider is uh, expiration is there no? Okay. For expiry, uh, right now I could I could think is that whenever the user is requesting for the URL. I can check whether this particular URL is expired or not. Okay. Uh, say I have separate service called expiration service. Expiry service. So I can check whether this particular URL has expired. Based on that, like even I can maintain here expiry date also in the cache itself. If it is expired, then I can return 404 and kick out of the DB also. This is one way to go. Uh, but the problem here is what if the expired URL is not even accessed? Right, then it will uh, be in the DB forever. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so instead of expiration service, I'll go with the cleanup service. Okay. Periodically, periodically, this service, what it will do is it will go and update, uh, it will clean up the database. So, so when once it is reaches, is like say default is one month. If user has specific, specified the expiration date, then we'll go and check on the DB. If there is any expired for today, we'll, we'll clean it out. Otherwise, we'll do uh, like based on the month. Calculate okay. the month. So you will go the through month. the entire DB and see that, okay, uh, whatever was created before this timestamp, you need to uh, delete those. Like that. Correct. That. Yeah, so we are doing it. Yeah, that. Correct. Then it will be a heavy operation. Like all the time, I have to go and check the DB. Okay, so okay, so come from the beginning. Like user will be requesting for the longer URL to redirect. So what it will do is like our uh, load balancer will direct to the redirection service, and from there we'll go and check the cache whether uh, this particular short URL exists. Then if yes, then we'll be returning them the um, corresponding long URL. If not, if there is any cache miss, then we'll go and fetch it from the DB, and we'll update the cache also accordingly. Okay. Okay, for that I have to write an API. Yes, so here comes that. I'll like it here itself directly. Okay, whenever there is a new request for the Sorry for that. Okay. So I pay redirect URL. So same thing, I'll be having a paid AP. This is again to throttle the request, like we can handle the rate limiting here. Uh, and uh, yeah, corresponding short URL. And uh, the user ID we don't need because anybody can come and click on the URL, right? Mm. But so in that case, why do we need a paid entry? Anyway, we need it because if I'm confused here quickly, do we really need a paid entry for this redirection URL? Uh, so whoever like API dev key is basically the uh, developer key who has written the code, right? So it is going to be there in all the URLs. So it's not specific to the user, it's specific to the basically mm -hmm. the front end of the service. So, so, yeah. okay. okay, and then short URL. So redirection URL will have the API dev key and the short URL and the response. Okay, I'll just make it big, it's very small. Okay. Uh, and the response is going to be in nothing but just a normal HTTP status code 301 for the redirection. It's a permanent redirection. Okay. 
HTTP code 301. Okay, here, like we, we can do one more thing is that whenever the redirection is happening, we can actually go and increment the DB that, uh, uh, like, yeah, this, this URL has been visited currently. So even we can update the, like if you want for the aggregation purpose, like analytic purpose, we can even maintain the location, geographic information, as well as this, we can increment this last visited count. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it make sense? Like, yeah, see we can here, like I could think is that, uh, say I can have a message queue over here. So just just for what I was thinking is, uh, say whenever there is a redirection request, like this is uh, completely for the, I was thinking for the analytic purpose, like as I mentioned the last visited. So whenever the uh, request comes in, I can put it in the message queue. So one service keep uh, listening to this particular topic and then, and then go and update the last visited or it, it can increment and even it can increment the geographical location. Yeah, but uh, you want the low latency, right? And message is going to increase your latency. How you yeah, actually, handle it? Yes, yeah, so actually I'm not going, so this is asynchronous call, right? So like anyway, this is not, this call is completely independent of this particular one. So I, I, so I will just put it in the message queue, okay? This will go and uh, read it from the cache and return to the user. So just it will, it will return the URL. So meanwhile, periodically what it can do is like one more service analytic service can I'll keep listening to the topic and then analytic service. It can listen to this and then like this is come one, only for the analytics purpose. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Just for like just to update the using like some meta collect the metadata, metadata. Oh, okay. okay. Makes sense. Okay. So so anything I'm missing off, like uh, say I uh, road survey, like so the system is going to support uh, write as well as read. Yeah, this sounds good. Uh, so we are almost out of time. So if you have any final thing to say or anything to include, you can do it now. Okay, so I my functional requirements are these two, these two and expiration also we covered it. And this is flow latency and this availability and we discussed about the storage, uh, storage part and how my AP is going to flow. And I wrote query for this, and this is my two URLs, which is delete, uh, redirection. Okay, if I want to delete, I can even delete also, but right now I'm not supporting, just to creating and then re redirecting, I can delete based on the expiration time. Yep. Um, yeah, logging, if you want to logging and monitoring, again, from the message queue, I can, what I can do is, I can have one more service, for logger and aggregation service and monitoring. I can say logger and monitoring. Again, this can this can listen from the message queue. Right? Uh, okay, if it makes sense, like it can listen from this and, and uh, it can collect the logs and even it will be used for monitoring. Like as we say, this is highly available system. Like if uh, like we'll by monitoring, we'll come to know that if anything goes wrong, we can before going like if it is going big, we can. Initial stage it itself, we can identify and then fix it. Roger. Yeah. Uh, Sounds good. Seventy, I'm just so damn proud of you. Like it was very, very structured and you covered everything. Like you covered functional requirements, non functional requirements, capacity estimation. You even wrote the APIs to discuss about the DB. And I loved how you talked about trade offs and I, I was noticing those little things that you talked about that we could use SQL or no SQL. Even in cache, you did not jump and just take any random cache's name. You said, okay, cache, you were playing it safe also. A few things could have been improved, obviously. That is there for any HRD route. Like, uh, I knew that if I question you a lot, so I was a lenient interviewer in that sense because I knew this is your first HRD discussion ever and all of that. So I was a very leading interview. I did not try to confuse you too much and I did not want you to, you know, be overwhelmed, but they can be really, you know, hard interviews as well. So uh, you seem a bit underconfident that if I try confusing you, you might get confused. Even though you knew stuff, you know everything, you, you can do amazing. You need to have a bit more confidence in yourself, right? Okay. Because you were able to do so well. You were able to walk through both the, APIs, you were able to show that, okay, this is going to be the structure. You were able to discuss everything in detail. And you did give a lot of answers. When I asked you, you said that 
especially the batch answer that you gave i really liked it you were able to give come up with a good use case or as well but you also need to look a bit more confident like you did amazing but uh, i could look at it in your face i understand it you know youtube video and first hlg discussion i get it it can be overwhelming but so can interviews be and mock interviews is a good way to go get over your fear uh, like you you did amazing much better than i expected so kudos but have a bit more confidence in yourself yes sure uh, okay sure. can you go down a bit uh the db part was really good the discussion was good i i i really like that in the end when i said that is there anything final that you want to say all you had covered everything you went back to your requirements you saw it structurally and uh, it was so structured thought process i could see you were sure that you have covered these points and then you also mentioned logging monitoring some people just randomly you know they get very scared and they say that uh now we are done now i don't want to mention anything but because the interviewer has asked you to say any final few things one or two things anything is left uh, it is good that you mentioned logging monitoring and you went back to the requirements and you were sure to the interviewer also that you are sure that you have covered everything and you know you can think in detail uh analytics logging monitoring it is something that i told it you can actually ignore but you still went ahead and did it right so kudos for that uh here like you knew what is base 62 base 64 i'm sure a lot of you know people in the audience might get a bit overwhelmed what if we don't know this what if it's a system that we don't know it is fine you could have like and this is for the audience like it is fine if you do not know so many details also but it is always good to go through the common system designs and know that there is something called base 62 base 64 what are the different encodings possible right so i could see that you are like well thought through well read through for this question so i could see the work that you have done right and especially uh, like you used the cheat sheet also that i told at 1 million per day is 12 per second and you use all of that and you did capacity estimation quickly so great job great job but now mm -hmm. you also tell me how do you feel how was your first experience of the hld Uh, so sir, actually, I was very nervous first thing because this is first ever uh, discussion. As I told you, right? Like this is the first ever discussion I am doing on such a topic. Uh, even I connected with the peers like in that group, but I okay. didn't get much response. And I was like, okay, fine. And I was practicing it in my own way that how I'm going to like even as you say, I know the content, but I was not able to deliver it properly. Like you actually I even thought of discussing about RPC call how I'm going to communicate with the between the services. but i forgot in between and i just uh, i just threw the flow but more often the you know negative part i was very very happy that i was able to you know cover all of these things and i was remember and i know um, i was able to you know follow the structure hld structure how how i have to proceed from the end to end even i forgot about our some calculations but is yes, i was able to make it and i am really proud of this Yeah, being able to do this much in one hour is a very big deal. You should be very, very proud of yourself. A lot of people get overwhelmed; they get uh, stuck that what to say next, what to do. But you handled it very, very well. So you did amazing. Thank you. Anything else you would like to say? Thank you for that, Kriti. Really, <laughs> see now I I really when whenever I see the topic, you know, like see it's not like I have not read the HLD before. I have read many times, even for the since two years I I was. seriously i was reading it but now when i look back now i was thinking like i really did not un understand deeply what it was saying the sentence i was able to read but i didn't understand what it was but now when i go back and read it was it looks very simple to me because you taught me the concept you no know, like i know from the basic now so if i want to do for you know for the bigger system i have the confidence that i can do it they like given if i go for instagram any news feed systems or any booking or if anything like it requires some complex logic yes i have the confidence that i can do and really thank you for that awesome and i could see that you know now you know the basics of communication of db and uh, like capacity estimation you were able to do fast you were able to do it in a more structured way so i guess the course did help somehow hopefully uh, but uh honestly i would like to mention to everyone that she was one of the most sincere students also 
like uh, she used to do homeworks whenever i asked that you do this capacity estimation and come back she used to do she used to put pictures on the discord group uh, she used to be very active on discord she used to mail me message me on insta they i have i know that uh, there have been times when she has been very demotivated also but she has not given up i could see that you know and uh, being able to have students who are very very regular and sincere about it is the best thing because there is no point of the course if uh, the students are not showing up because there are a few students who will sign up who will spend the money but they will not show up and then they will blame the teacher the point is that you have to make time for yourself no one is going to spoon feed you everything you have to practice you have to read about it and you put in all the effort and you know one of the ideal students i could have had and uh, kudos to you because she even put up a story on insta once that uh, she was with a baby and her baby needed her and still she was attending the class and she was able to understand everything so it is these things that make me even more proud like even while recording this she told that you know her baby was wanting or was waiting for her and uh, i like she the baby wakes up at 2 pm so she wanted to record before that and it's amazing how like people keep complaining that they don't know how to manage time but if you can manage time with a small kid like a small kid you could do anything possible and you're really proving it and to all the women out there uh, honestly there have been hardly any women in my on my channel who have come up and done a mock interview and you're one of those you have uh, you are truly showing it to the world that you know nothing is impossible the things are changing and really proud really really proud of you thank you i, I feel genuinely lucky to have you as part of the community i'm sure you will do great in lld dsa i'm sure you'll be cracking that dream job soon and I am waiting for that message. Yeah, I am also waiting. Actually, I started. I was uh, waiting. Like when will when? See, I was I had a plan. Like when before you are starting in a day, I have to complete. You know, practicing all the systems, and I am almost fifty percent done with that. Uh, few remaining things are there, and I, yes, now I read. I told you right. I had a confidence that I can able to do. And LLD, please give homework, Kirti. I again, I am saying because of homework only, I was able to do this much. The homework played major role. So there so are two me, types of students. One one type of students are who say that don't give any homework, teach everything in class. <laughs> Then there's these kind of people. Uh, but then I have to deal with all kinds of people, right? So, and quizzes, quizzes also plays major role. <laughs> quizzes to revise the concept, as you say, and even to test our ability, like how much we absorb, we understand yeah. from the class. So quiz and uh, homework, please don't <laughs> leave it. Even I'll do whenever I get the time. But this too is most, most, most important. So quiz is not just for uh, you know to test, but also after a while, like uh, right now you are in contact with it, like you are you are doing HLD regularly. After a while, what will happen after say one year? You will forget the concepts and you might want to revise them again. So when you go through the quizzes. you will remember and uh, it will act sort of a revision not just the notes but quizzes will also act as revision and they will show you how much you remember so for all of those things quizzes notes uh, all of those things really help but thank you so much for coming and doing this chevanti again very very proud of you thank you thank Guys, you so go much. connect with chevanti so her <laughs> linkedin and uh, all the details are in the description go check it out <laughs>